trainers right now under investigation at Santa Anita are some of them to blame for the 29 horses that have died this season at the fabled California track. A spike that put horse racing under the national spotlight, increasing calls for this sport to be banned. Investigators also looking at whether heavy winter rain was a factor. Was the track at fault? They kept sealing the track. But unfortunately, every time you seal it, the pad underneath gets harder and harder. Stefan Friedman represents the owners of Santa Anita. It's not just the turf or the surface they're racing on. There's medication issues. That's a question now being asked. Were some trainers over-medicating their horses, running them too hard? For every 100, 100 guys that are here, there's always going to be one or two that are going to either not pay attention or, or try to do something flaky. I mean, people just like pushing, you know, I mean, especially owners. They, you know, they don't want to pay for them sitting out of some farm and not making any money. 25 trainers have lost horses this Santa Anita season, among them big names like Jim Cassidy. What happened? Well, we haven't figured that out yet. Hall of Famer Jerry Hollendorfer is the only trainer who's lost three at Santa Anita since December, and he's lost another two at Golden Gate Fields near San Francisco since November. We've been looking at every trainer's records. Have you been looking at his record? Yes. And what are you finding? Well, I mean, it's, it's an ongoing process. We've just gotten some information about, you know, what he's done and, and, and his violations, and so we're, we're considering whether he will be, every trainer, we're considering whether they'll be welcome back at Santa Anita. The California Horse Racing Board is leading the probe, but won't release necropsies or speak to us until they're done. A criminal probe by the Los Angeles DA also underway. They say to determine whether unlawful conduct or conditions affected the welfare and safety of horses. Not everybody is on the same page. Well, unfortunately, we all get painted with the same brush, you know, and, and that hurts us. And... Uh, but I think they're, you know, they're getting tougher. Meantime, Scott Herbertson, professional gambler, racehorse owner, is speaking out. I think it's a few bad apples make us all look bad. You know, you got guys pushing these horses beyond their limits and, and, and causing these catastrophic accidents. This is not just a 2019 issue. 29 dead so far this year. According to the CHRB, 37 died at Santa Anita last year, 54 the year before. And it's not just a Santa Anita issue, it's nationwide systemic. Our uh, incidence of fatal injury is much higher than it is in most of the other countries that we've studied. In some cases, it's much as five times. Jockey club stats suggest 10 racehorses die in the US every week. Anti-racing activist Patrick Batuello claims the real figure is much higher. We have documented over 5,000 confirmed kills on US tracks just since 2014. We estimate that over 2,000 horses are killed racing or training across America every year. CNN has not independently verified Batuello's figures. I hope to think that even with some of these breakdowns, the guys just feel like the horse can run one more time. And I think they just take the risk too many times. Of three horses Jerry Hollendorfer has bought from Herberts in the past eight months, two of them are now dead, including Coaches. Right about here, I think Mario feels him going wrong, and he's just trying to pull him out safe. Coaches broke down at Santa Anita May 25th and was euthanized. Hollendorfer had bought the eight-year-old horse after what's called a claiming race back in November. To enter, you put a price on your horse, and anyone can buy it or claim it. When Jerry Hollendorfer claims one of your horses, uh, how do you, you just feel? cringe. you just like, well, you hope for the best. Coaches was dead in a little over six months. He knows his name. My carrot. I'd ask him for a carrot, he'd start swaying his head. He was a sweet horse. After Cochise died, Hollendorfer told the Associated Press, we thought he would run real well. We thought he would win. In my mind, there is absolutely no doubt that we've done every single thing properly with Cochise and all the rest of our horses too. We don't yet know how Hollendorfer's three horses died at Santa Anita. We don't have those necropsies due to the ongoing investigation. I called Jerry Hollendorfer. I told him we'd noticed a few of his horses had died and that we'd been hearing some pretty serious allegations against him. I asked if he'd like to sit down and tell us his side of the story. He said no, and he told me never to call him again. Another California trainer, Mike Pender, right now serving a 30-day suspension after training a horse with a fractured leg, then shipping him up to Golden Gate Fields in the Bay Area and trying to enter him in a race there. 
Pender said he couldn't talk to us until after his suspension. You've seen trainers training horses that are clearly unfit. All the time. The jockeys are concerned. You know, I'm riding for a big guy. I don't want to scratch the horse if he doesn't feel 100% because the guy will fire me or get mad at me and all this kind of thing. So we've explained to the riders, look, you blame it on the veterinarians. You just say, hey, the vet said no. There's a lot of money involved. Um, there's a lot of different actors involved. And frankly, the regulations are not good enough. And then there's the issue of medication. The Jockey Club states improper drug use can directly lead to horse injuries and deaths. Stopping the potential masking of injuries, that is how you are going to reduce these numbers. According to Dr. Sue Stover at UC Davis, more than 85% of horses that die on a track have a previous injury, which led to their death, which might have been masked by meds. Oftentimes people will say, I, I, I just gave it to help the horse. You know, he felt better with it. And yes, the horse did feel better with it, but in some cases the horse felt better than he actually was, and that put that horse at risk of injury. There are now cameras in every barn at Santa Anita, and right now trainer Billy Morey under investigation after an assistant was filmed allegedly doping horses the end of March. We tried to speak to Morey after a hearing. He went to the men's room. He denies the charge. Jerry Hollendorfer has been sanctioned for over-medicating and doping issues 19 times since 2006. We couldn't find any evidence of successful appeals. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise you? Mm. Why not? Well, because Jerry just, he's, he's tunnel vision. He does what he wants to do and that's it. If you don't like it, it's too bad. I'm just saying. Hollendorfer's career earnings, nearly $200 million. Total fines for those offenses in California, only 16000 950, and never suspended. Bob Baffert is one of the most famous names in racing. Five-time Kentucky Derby winner Santa Anita is his home track. You know what? People don't understand that Jerry felt really bad when he lost those horses. Felt really bad. And he's a Hall of Fame trainer. He's a really good trainer. But he does take really good care of his horses. I don't know, but he runs lower quality, you know, those, those claiming races sometimes. They can be, uh, you know, it's tough. We certainly are pretty sad when they get hurt, Hollendorfer has told the AP. The owners of Santa Anita and California authorities say they are reducing the use of riding crops, prohibiting most meds in the 48 hours before a race or training, carrying out deeper pre-race and now even pre-training vet checks, bringing in a pet scanner and cracking down. Issues remain across America. Among them, racing in the U.S. is governed by 38 independent jurisdictions. You go to a different state, you don't know what the rules are. The Jockey Club now championing a congressional bill that would create a national anti-doping body to reduce the number of horses dying on America's tracks. We think that we're at a tipping point, and this is America's legacy sport, but it has to look inside and make some substantial changes. Scott Herbertson believes strong pre-race exams will weed out the bad apples. Are you worried what people are going to say when they know that you've spoken to us? I'm sure I'm going to get backlash probably from all sides, but, you know, I can't sit silently and watch this happen. It's too sick.